Hey, welcome back to the garage and part two of my land speed racer uh, project. Uh, if you missed part one, uh, the brief, uh, there's a little more of an introduction here, but the, my plan is to take my uh, classic 1972 Honda CB200. I'm going to go out to the Bonneville Salt Flats and uh, try to set a land speed record. Uh, so I'm going to the uh, Bonneville Motorcycle Speed Trials, which is an AMA event. Uh, there's a few other events with slightly different rules. Uh, so what I'm targeting is the... Uh, uh, the AMA rules, and one of the things, I believe it's section 2R in the rules, is you must have a steering damper. Uh, now, normally that wouldn't be a big issue, but uh, nobody makes a bolt-on kit for a uh, 1974 CB200, uh, shockingly enough. So, I have this, just a standard uh, steering damper, uh, just a cheap one I bought on Amazon. And I've been looking at things, I think I have a plan for mounting it. Let's, uh, let's see how this is going to work out. So right under the steering head here, there's a bracket for something. I'm not sure what it's for, but uh, I think it's, it'll be a good mounting point for my steering damper. Uh, so I've got the damper. I've got a uh, simple little uh, fork clamp that uh, mounts onto the forks. And uh, just by eyeballing it, I think if I can mount it here, I think I'll have enough travel. Now, one of the uh, critical things they mentioned a couple times in the rules is the steering damper cannot act as the fork stop. So I need to make sure I have more play in this than I need so that this stops on the uh, the normal fork stops. They don't want uh, you know this actually acting as the, uh, the limiting device for how far the forks can turn. And so I've been just holding things up here and playing around with it and it looks like this is gonna work for me. So I need to make a bracket to mount here. Uh, so what I've got is I actually have a long, uh, like a four foot section of aluminum angle uh, that I've been, it's been really useful throughout the, I've had it for several years. I, every once in a while I cut a little bit off of it to make a bracket. Uh, nice uh, thick wall stuff, I believe it's like quarter inch wall. Um, I believe if I cut this down, what I can do is put a through bolt there. I'll need to shorten it up a little bit and then a through bolt and I'll need a spacer underneath it, I believe I can mount this right underneath. So I'm gonna get my Sharpie and mark some lines on here and uh, see about cutting this down. I think that's gonna work. All right, that wasn't as bad as I thought. That's, uh, you know, so one of the things I've been pondering for a while is I want to make sure that this, I find a good way to mount this. Let's crank that up and actually get some steering damper. Steering damper is pretty important at high speed. Uh, the concern is, of course, if you get a little bit of a high speed wobble, it could uh, amplify at just the right speed and you really don't want a death wobble at high speed. Now, granted, I'm on a classic 200cc motorcycle. High speed is relative, uh, but I can see why they just make it uh, a rule for all classes. There we go. Oh, okay, now that is causing the bracket to move when I tighten it down. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to uh, really tighten that bracket a lot more. I'm trying to think if I wanna brace it up a little bit better so that it's not just that bolt holding it. Because it works, but when you stiffen the uh, dampener up, or the damper up, I have an idea. Just need to cut some metal first. We're going to make a stiffener bracket. So I spent a few minutes, cut this out, uh, put in the sheet metal brake, and drilled a couple holes. So this will keep it from... Uh, um, give it some rigidity forward and backward. I added a second hole, let me show you here, uh, actually, and a third hole. Ignore this one. This one, uh, I realized after I drilled this one that it interfered with the hole that goes through that holds the uh, steering damper. So I had to relocate, so I've got an extra hole in there. But uh, this will bolt onto there and it should make it uh, nice and rigid with, you know, obviously in, the uh, steel alone would do it in tension um, with the brake in there. That should give it some compression. And uh, you'll note that this is bent a little bit. 
Uh, I've taken the tank. I, I painted the tank just yesterday, and I realized, you know, I'm just going to damage my paint if I keep working around it. And I know everything clears the tank now, so I just got it out of the way. So there's already this hole on the frame, and I needed to go up to the bracket, and that is a little bit of a curve. So uh, I didn't show how I curved this, but uh, I'll put a link to the video I did uh, close to two years ago now. Uh, when I was making patch panels on my Datsun 510, I showed how you can use a shrinker stretcher to uh, uh, make curves like this. So I stretched the uh, flange there a little bit, and with the bracket in place, uh, that now has just the right curve. Ah, kind of hard to hold it up, but it's going to stay in there just like that. So I'm going to bolt it up one more time uh, just to mock it up and then i'm gonna shoot some paint on this so it looks nice and then i think i can call this part of the project done finally success i'm happy with this now uh, so i had to do a couple things i had to uh, drill one more hole here so this comes back a little bit which uh, fixes my alignment here also, I lowered this bracket and added some washers underneath it to make sure that uh, the body of this doesn't hit the, uh, uh, the bracket. And now I have full travel. Uh, we have plenty of extra travel on the, uh, let's get these out of the way. Still working on the wiring, as you can see. Uh, plenty, more than enough travel on the steering damper and I haven't tried to, I don't have all the bolts completely tight, but let's crank that up a bit so that we actually feel something. And there's a little bit of flex from the bolts not being tight, but not very much really. Uh, I tighten this bolt up and that's going to be fine. So I think we can call that one done. I'm going to take that apart and paint it, but next uh, we need to work on a chain guard. Uh, that's another rule in the AMA rule book is you must have a chain guard. And in 1974, Honda didn't see a good reason to put one on. Uh, so I've got my flat sheet of metal. I got to get some stuff out of the way here and uh, figure out how I'm going to mount a chain guard. I mean, bending up a piece of metal is easy enough. I just need to figure out how I'm going to mount it to the swing arm, um, whether I'm going to weld it or clamp it or what I'm going to do. I don't know. We'll figure that out. Well, I've spent the last, uh, I don't know, hour or so just staring and pondering and playing with some cardboard templates. And I think I've come up with something that's going to work. Uh, my original thought was to mount the chain guard to the swing arm like you would typically see, but I don't see any reason for it to be on there, especially when I've already got a mounting hole here. It's the same hole that my foot pegs on. I can mount it there, and my plan is... Uh, to put a uh, brace down from the uh, from the fender here to support the back. So the rules, as they state, is it has to be made of uh, made of metal, no plastic, uh, metal of uh, appropriate alloy or something like that. Basically, uh, 18 gauge steel certainly sounds like it'll work, and it must be a quarter inch wider than the chain. And I'm much wider than that. In fact, I'll probably end up cutting this down a little bit more. But uh, I think that'll work. I've just got a little jog in it to uh, meet up with this hole. And uh, like I said, I'll, I'll make another uh, brace here to support it a little bit. So uh, let's cut one out in metal, bend it up on the sheet metal brake, and uh, see how it fits. Well, I think this is going to work. Uh, it's a decent fit. I can get it in here. I figured out the right order to snake it in. It's a little tricky, but I think I can mount it there. And if I'm, if I mount it just right, it's probably going to rub the shock a little bit, which I'm not thrilled about. So I may need to trim it a little bit around there. And there's also this flange on the outside of the sprocket that it just barely rubs on a little bit, depending on what angle I mount it at. So I'm gonna need to do a little bit of trimming, but all in all, I think this is gonna work. It's good and sturdy. The only rules are it's gotta be metal, quarter inch wider than the chain, and it has to be long enough to completely cover the, uh, the back edge of the sprocket. So I think 
I have checked all those off with this. So I'm just gonna line this up where I think I am gonna want it. And I'm gonna drill a hole. Well, this is actually fitting pretty well now. Uh, I've got it bolted on with the foot peg and it's actually pretty sturdy even with just that one bolt because it's uh, also resting on, uh, on this part of the case. But it's, and it's, it is clearing the wheel in the sprocket. However, the suspension obviously is in full droop when, I'm, when there's weight on the suspension and you know, I'm a big fat guy, so uh, <laughs> I compress the suspension a bit, that is going to rub a little bit. So I was thinking about trimming it a little bit or doing something, but I realized uh, just like I did on that bracket up front, if I, uh, I, I can use my shrinker and stretcher a little bit, what I can do is I made a couple marks here. I'm gonna stretch it there a little bit, which will curve it up. And then I can shrink in here to curve it back down so it comes straight out again. And I'm going to try to move stuff around so I can get the uh, camera in place so I can actually show you that because I just kind of glossed over it before. So what I have here is a shrinker stretcher set. Uh, and what these are are just simply, uh, and I can't really get it to where I can show you, but when you uh, pull down on the lever, so there's a lever that closes these jaws. The stretcher but pulls down and actually pulls the metal a little bit. So it bites down and pulls. So that stretches the metal, which in this case, if I stretch this, it's going to bend it up this direction. The shrinker does just the opposite. It grabs it and pushes it together. So just, just a little bit, and uh, that way you can get it to bend the other direction. So if I stretch in this area where I marked it just a little bit, I can get this to bend up a little bit more and then I can use my shrinker over here to bring it back so it's parallel with the chain again. So let's see about doing that. And I see it moving already. It doesn't take much. It's one of those things where at first you don't think you're doing anything, but you can see we've got a decent bend in that already. Uh, I'm going to take a look on the bike. I think that's probably enough, but I want to eyeball it here first. I'm going to do a little bit more and actually in front of this just a little bit. So now you can see we've got quite a bend in there, but that should help me get up over the sprocket. All right, now, I want to make this parallel to the chain again. Move the camera over a bit. So we'll use the shrinker. And we have a nice little S shape should go up and over that chain. So I think that looks really good. I, I kind of like the uh, the swoopy look, sort of a retro look, I think kind of fits the bike. Um, it's really pretty sturdy just as it is, but I am gonna just take a piece of steel. In fact, I've got some. It can't go up already because it's against that, so I just need to keep it from going down. So I think if I take a piece of this up to this hole and I'll drill another hole in my sprocket, that, that's not going anywhere. That's gonna be good and sturdy. So that's just two more holes. Well, one hole in this, two holes in this. Uh, hopefully that's just an eight mil, I think. I think I got a bolt that'll fit that. And then I can clean this up and paint it. I can paint the uh, bracket that I did for the steering damper. And I think that's, uh, that's pretty good progress for the, uh, for the day. Um, pretty happy with my progress this weekend. Um, the, the last video, uh, that I showed you the fuel system that was yesterday which was Saturday today is Sunday it's still pretty early but I've got some other stuff I have to do this afternoon but these were two the, the steering damper and the uh, chain guard were two things that while they're not too tricky they were things that I wasn't completely sure how I was going to do so I'm real happy to have those figured out uh, I think it's going to be pretty smooth from here on out it's still a lot of work but uh, I think 
hopefully no surprises, but uh, there'll be some more videos to come. Uh, and like I said, I've got, I've got about four weeks before uh, I head out to Bonneville. And uh, so if you're interested in seeing the rest of it, definitely uh, subscribe and uh, hit thumbs up if you like it. And until next week, hopefully, uh, hopefully I get some more progress done.